Nathan with Pro Video Coalition, joined here by Nick from Caldwell Lenses. Caldwell Lenses, also from Chemical Wedding, which is my company as well. Chemical Wedding, Caldwell Lenses and Chemical Wedding. And we are taking a look here at the brand new, but based on classic, these are the Neo Super Baltars, based on the classic Baltars. Yes. Where, uh, tell us about what's what's kind of the history behind this. Where does this okay. originate from? So the Baltars and the Super Baltars were workhorse lenses in the film industry in Hollywood for years and years. Um, the films like uh, Citizen Kane, all the way through to films like The Godfather, were essentially shot in America with this, these classic lenses. There wasn't a lot of lens um, choices available back in those days in cinematography. It's fairly limited. Um, in England, you had the um, people were using the Taylor Hobson, and the Cook lenses, mm -hmm. primarily. They had a distinct European look. And in America, the English, the American film industry was defined by the use of these specific lenses. The Baltars, the original Baltars, were replaced later on by the Super Baltars because of changes in technology. There was introduction of high index glass that allowed optical designers to have the lenses perform even better than the lenses they had before. The problem with those lenses was that um, they usually had a lot of uh, toxic and noxious substances in them, mm -hmm. some of which are radioactive. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, not horribly radioactive, but radioactive enough to make them not legal anymore. Right. Okay. Um, the problem with those elements is being radioactive, um, the radiation in the lenses actually changed the character of the glass over time. So the original Baltars that we know of at the moment, which are now very sought after lenses, mm -hmm have deteriorated quite substantially. Yellow a lot of them have been monkeyed with, you know, re-coated or re-polished, and they're all gone off spec. So what Brian did, Brian had a very good friend, Brian Caldwell, mm -hmm. who remanufactured these. Brian had a very good friend um, who uh, sold him a set of um, the original blueprints for the Bausch & Lomb designs for the Super Baltars. And so what Brian has done is he's taken those original designs and remanufactured them. And there's a big difference between taking a vintage lens taking it apart, recoating, polishing, and putting it back together again, and remanufacturing. Remanufacturing means you go back to the original specification, you use the glass that is available now, and you redesign where you need to to make it fit within existing materials. But you hold to the original specifications. So bizarrely, this lens, which is a remanufactured Baltar, actually holds its specifications to the original design better than the existing Baltars do to those specifications. So if you want to see what a Baltar looked like when they were brand new, this is what they look like. Now, there's not a massive difference between what they looked like before and what they look like in the remanufactured version. What we are seeing is the fact that these remanufactured versions are extremely consistent from lens to lens. The problem with the older Baltars, you can find them on eBay now for quite a lot of money, is that one 50 mil doesn't look like any other 50 mil in the world. They've all changed to some degree, but at different rates. Yeah and none of them match within a series. In fact, the only really well-matched series that we can find is at Panavision and Woodland Hills. They have um, originally had six sets of original Baltars, uh, of which four complete sets remain. The rest have been used as donor optics, et cetera. Okay. As far as we know, there's between four and six sets of those, of those that actually match, because they were all bought at the same time, have all been looked after by the same people, and there's no interoperability. The other part of the equation is, the Baltar lenses, when they were made, they were made with testing equipment that had limitations. Obviously, in the digital age, we have much better testing equipment, mm -hmm. so the, the lenses we make have a far more consistent variety. There's some interesting things about the, um, the Baltars. This is the 35mm Baltar, mm -hmm. which is a classic workhorse lens in the film industry, and it had some attributes that, um, that basically defined the look of classic Hollywood photography. Classic Hollywood photography wasn't something that evolved this kind of beautiful glow on the face and this beautiful kind of treatment of the skin. Mm -hmm. They didn't evolve by accident. It evolved because these lenses just look that way. Yeah. They were designed to have, it was intentional. Yeah. When this lens is wide open, it has a, um, it has a, a halation mm -hmm. to the highlights that blooms out and gives you this beautiful glow on the face. Yeah. Now, very fortunate for us is most of the Baltars actually cover full frame cameras. Wow. This Baltar is on uh, a Venice Sony at the moment. Venice. And it covers the full Venice area. Now, okay. that veiling halation that we were talking about before that's incredibly beautiful is actually more apparent in these higher resolution cameras. Mm -hmm. In the lower resolution environments of the, of the film environment, mm -hmm. that halation was a contributing factor, but it's actually more apparent in the large format um, digital cameras and can be used very effectively. So in the high resolution 
film, a, a digital capture environment, we're looking for lenses that have got a lot more character. And these are any remanufactured Valtars really give you that in the space. And I really noticed um, a lot of that character that you're talking about, especially in the in the bokeh shaping, yeah. especially on this on one of the uh, tighter primes that you had. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of character there. These lenses are designed specifically for 35 mm work, not super 35, mm -hmm. 35. Mm -hmm. All right. So what's happening on the edges of the frame was not considered anything to be worried about. So where there's a pets file style mm -hmm. bokeh on the and edges of the frame rounding. of these lenses, exactly. Yeah. Now that wasn't a desirable attribute to a lens designer in that era, mm -hmm. but have become desirable attributes because of the thirst for op vintage optics, particularly in larger format cameras. The, um, the extra space that you get for Super 35 is outside the design area that was intended for the original lenses. And so now on these large format cameras, it's we're even seeing more even so. more of that yeah. character. That's but weirdly, they cover all the lenses that are the Super Baltars, other than two, the 20 and the 25, show all of that beautiful, um, ab those beautiful aberrations, yeah. which we have basically cultivated and uh, a taste for those aberrations right. over time because we see them in so many different projects. Mm -hmm. The 20 and 25 currently don't cover, but we'll be making a set of Ultra Baltars, which include the 20 and 25 that will cover full frame. They're due for release sometime in 2020. Okay. So we don't have a full range, which starts at the 20 mil. And remember, 20 mil on large format equates to something like a 10 mil in um, in uh, Super, Super 35. 35 sure. So that's an extremely wide angle lens. Right. So we're looking at remaking those for the large format environment, but with these characteristics, which is a slightly lower resolving lens, but with extremely good um, beauty characteristics. Okay. And so uh, what lenses are in the set then? You said it starts at 20 There's, and goes um, up to... Well, these lenses are being sold by the Vintage Lens Corp um, uh, company. Okay. And, and, and there, so we basically, um, Corwell is providing the the, um, the optical cells mm -hmm. and the Vintage Lens Company is making the housings. Okay. So um, the housings are, are being provided by um, by other companies as well. Yep. But this um, this Vintage Lens Company actually holds to much more like the original look of what these yeah. lenses are. It and looks like a Zeiss it. Jenna kind of. Exactly. Or, uh, yeah. It has a very interesting look. Yeah. So the mechanics between the different housing companies vary. It's a question of taste as to which ones you prefer. Okay. These, but these are extremely well made and look fantastic. The optics though are all the same through all of the, we basically you can supply the optics to and I mean, the that, housing that's companies. And it's that, a different approach. It's a very different approach. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of like a open source kind of. It is. And it's <laughs> invigorating a market in saying to the customers, saying, what are you looking for? Contribute to that. Let us know what you, what you want. But yeah. these are a particularly good example of a housing. They're very solid. Yeah. They're all common fronted. They're much more usable than the, the original, even the, some of the original rehoused Baltars. And are they, are they consistent on the T-stops? Mainly T2.3? They I vary. They, 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 okay. They're T2.3 up until the longer ones, and they start to get progressively slower. And quite yep. frankly, that's typical of all lenses, even the modern yep. era. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Thanks so much. Thank you much.